Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to this session. You made it this far. That's very good. So uh, the next whole 20, 15, 20 minutes, we'll be talking about supply chain security. Why does it matter? And what can you take away from today's session? So my name is Sayam Patak. Uh, I'm working as a director of technical evangelism at Sivo. Uh, we are a cloud company, and we provide managed Kubernetes offering. And I'm also a CNCF ambassador, uh, and I have my own YouTube channel and a community called Cube Simplify with the same mission of simplifying cloud native and teaching people. So you can connect with me on all the platform. I'm very active, might reply you right now. So uh, that's the agenda. Anyways, we'll, we'll skip because we'll be uh, going to the next. So let's first discuss where are we with the current landscape of the open source ecosystem. Uh, so we have different bunch of softwares running in different styles, like we have monolithic applications uh, that are running open source software. Then we have we slowly moved, and we many companies are still in the transition of moving towards microservices, uh, where we still are using a lot of open source libraries, a um, lot of dependencies which are there. Then we move. Uh, in 2013-ish uh, era, we moved kind of into the containerization ecosystem, where we are running now thousands and thousands of containers. Like you know, anybody you published a container, and I might be running it without even knowing that you are the actual owner of that uh, particular container or that image. Uh, then obviously we we deploy those containers onto um, cloud platforms and Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is again a massive piece of software out there which uses many dependencies and many open source uh, tooling. And also, we don't only use Kubernetes. When we kind of install Kubernetes, we have on top of it, we apply the security layer, the monitoring solution, the logging solution, and each is accompanied by the open source software. So basically, we are using open source everywhere. So all the talks that you have heard, AI, ML, machine learning, everything is powered by open source. Yeah, we do add some flavors on top of it, but we use a lot of open source libraries out there. Now, what has happened in the past few years and why we are discussing that? So in the past few years, the number of supply chain attacks have increased, and they have increased at a massive, massive scale. They have increased that the government has to put a lot of orders to have some solution for the attacks that are happening on the software. And the most basic thing that we can at least do is, uh, you know, the, the, the for the supply chain that we'll be discussing, the S-bombs. So a few attacks, like, yeah, this is a 650% increase. This was by, I think, uh, the Sonar type report. Um, and this is of 2021. It might have even increased further. Some of the very interesting attacks, Urgent 11, that, like, um, impacted, you know, the MRI machines, F-22 jets. So, like, you can imagine the scale a small attack can go to. It can actually attack everything, the ships, the F-22. The MRI machines, uh, they were, there were 11 critical vulnerabilities over there. Then uh, SolarWinds attack, Log4j attack, uh, is, which is a simple logging library in Java. Java, So that impacted you know, hundreds and thousands of customers. And then it went into spent of hundreds and thousands of dollars in fixing those. The PyPy attack, which is kind of a typo squatting, like they, it was basically that this library is getting deprecated. So the links were set with, with almost the same, uh, which kind of makes it authentic to you to believe that it is actually PyPy, but it is not. So when once you go over there, you're gone. Again, by industry type, another report by a Anchor. This is 2022. I think was taken by 400 plus people. So you can see the number of attacks within only that segment of industries that say that they are impacted, moderately impacted, or um, still not impacted. Attack chaining. So when, when your software is having a piece of library or a code that you're using from the third party, and it is having a vulnerability, and software B uses the software A, software C uses software B. So basically, the vulnerability that was found in software A goes through all the software B and C. So that is, that is the kind of chaining that is happening. So you might be using a very good software, and you might not know that it is using a library that is getting um, you know, exposed to an exploit. So every software that will be having that vulnerability will be impacted. 
now I like to categorize the, these type of attacks, um, like one are the planned kind of attacks, where the hackers or a group of people, they target a specific industry, they target a specific piece of software, and they will be uh, putting out the attack over there. The second one are the known attacks that we actually kind of know. There are many vulnerabilities out there. Uh, we have some security scanning tools that we know, and we leave some critical vulnerabilities knowing, but when something big happens, then, then we react. So we don't patch the OS, we don't patch the software. So those are those fall under the uh, known vulnerabilities uh, which are there, we, which we obviously need to take care of. Then uh, is the unintentional one. Obviously, uh, it, is, it is like obvious to not have the passwords, not have the SSH keys stored in GitHub, but still people do. Still people have their AWS credentials in their GitHub repositories, and people get exposed. So those are kind of the unintentional ones. And the final one is duplicate, which I already discussed, the PyPy use case. Uh, that looks true, but is not true. So it, it, it'll be like typo squatting, adding a Unicode character that you won't even notice, but there'll be a, a malicious code in that. So supply chain security, again, uh, it's basically securing your whole supply chain of software at each stage. And uh, especially your software, you should be knowing what, what all pieces of software you're using. Should you be trusting that particular entity whose library you are actually using it? And you are using it in production. Because if something goes wrong, then probably you'll be spending thousands of, thousands, thousands of dollars, obviously, and a lot of time would be wasted in fixing those issues. Again, different types of attacks. We have already discussed malicious code, um, too much trust in the CI/CD ecosystem. Yeah, th that has happened. Um, like um, in open source, you have GitHub maintainers. If one of the credentials of the GitHub maintainers itself gets compromised, then they can push a library out there which is used by thousands of people. So those gets impacted as well. Uh, type of squatting, tool tempering, and outdated code. So what are we actually doing with the software? with the rise of containers, with the rise of all the you know, ease of use, like you know, NPM, Docker, you can, use, you can run anything with, within you know, a few seconds uh, by downloading a binary and just running it, or by downloading a container image and just running it. So basically, what we are doing is we are picking up a pen drive that is on the roadside, and we are plugging it into our systems. That's not safe, right? It's not safe. We all know that, but we all are doing that unless and until we get impacted. And when we get impacted, we get noticed. So you can see the, the attacks that happened over the years, which we have seen. Then there is a framework which is called SLSA. Uh, that is kind of gives you the best practices, SLSA levels, uh, one, two, three. And then it simply defines like if you do this, if you follow the best practices and standards, you will be able to achieve these levels of SLSAs. Now let's come to SBOM. Now we have discussed, like we all know attacks are too much. Supply chain security is needed. But what do we do? I mean, there should be something that we should be starting off with. And that's what we are here to learn, right? The first steps, what, how we should start doing something about securing our supply chains. How should we go back and, uh, you know, uh, and tell our organizations, our leaders that, you know, boss, there is something that we need to do with respect to the softwares that we are using. So the most basic thing that can be done, and that even the government mandated in one of their recent, I think, 14th, 14th of September, um, that SBOMs are mandatory for giving any pieces of software that will be given to the government. Now, yes, for the government is important, but for all of us also, for all the other organizations also, it is important. So that is where SBOM is. SBOM stands for Software Bills of Materials, and it basically giving like who's the author, uh, whether it is signed, dependencies of that, software licenses related to it, are you using the right software license with respect to the open source library that you are using. So all these things uh, are part of the SBOM. And you can see the White House order M2130, the link is there. That was the most recent one that, that I found about in, uh, with respect to the supply chain security. Real world kind of scenarios, uh, everybody eats food, so, but how they are prepared. So there is a complete chain of steps which is there. So farmers will grow the crops. Then your food is prepared and packaged inside the factory. Then it is distributed in the local shops. And uh, as an end user, I just consume the products. I don't care about uh, what is happening at all the other steps. But there are government agencies, there are organizations that are regularly 
checking at all these levels that whether the crops produced are fine, whether the factory is preparing and packaging the food right, whether distribution is happening properly. Are we doing that with the software? Not yet. But we, are, we want to move to that level. We want to move uh, towards a way where we are generating some sorts of uh, S-bombs for our um, things as a, like you take a medicine, it has its uh, pr it, it has all the components on it. You take any of the packed foods, it has the ingredient list on it. Why not with the software? We need that. That's only the customer cares about, right? How, what, what are the ingredients of this particular packet that I'm consuming? Whether it has, you know, uh, whether it has, it's a dairy product, whether it's a, it is gluten-free or not. It matters. It matters to our health. Similarly, having these information for software, like who is the author? Uh, what are the licenses for that? Just the basic set of information, whether there is any vulnerability in that, would, very, would be very helpful uh, in preventing the supply chain attacks. So SBOM benefits. Um, SBOM, again, you have like author name, supplier name, component name, hash, version, identifier, relationships, all these details. So SBOM obviously provides you a greater detail about your software. You exactly know which pieces of software you are using. You can actually connect the dots, see the relationships, see the graphs. Um, compli compliance and auditing. So many organization who does compliance and auditing, it will be very helpful. You already know what pieces of software you are using. So your compliance and audit becomes super simple. Then easy to find dependent vulnerabilities. So if any vulnerabilities are there, you can just uh, you know use your SBOMs and uh, scroll through it, or you know just parse it, have a code for that, and you'll be able to find whether you are impacted by a certain vulnerability in a particular library. Then um, continuous thread a uh, threat monitoring, not thread monitoring. So you can put that in your CI systems, and you can continuously monitor for the vulnerabilities and check in an autonomous way whether your software is impacted or not. Uh, there are two standards which, which you can read more about. Like one is Cyclone DX, one is SPDX. Cyclone DX is more on the o OWSP side, and SPDX is a Linux Foundation project. Uh, which Linux Foundation is already using that as certified. It shows kind of better relationships, but Cyclone DX is uh, more lightweight and li lightweight composition of relationship of the software. Just the stuff that I have read. Next, uh, I want to introduce now the tooling. So SigStore has introduced some set of tools that can help in uh, the supply chain security. First is the signing and verifying of the images that you are, or the artifacts that you are storing. Basically, let's say I have, uh, there is a code that I write, and I have signed that code using my key, and I place that public key in my repository. And you are consuming the code, you can actually verify that this code is coming from me because you have my public key. So that is great, right? You can verify that this code is coming from me, you trust me, so you trust the code. So you are safe over there. So you can trust the organizations, and if their code and their uh, artifacts are actually uh, signed, then you are in the good shape. You will know exactly what software you are using from which kind of developer or which organization they have signed it, uh, and you trust those organizations. So sign, and you can also verify that uh, those are there and continuously monitor that. So know what code you are running, um, and then telling the dev that code is from you is what six store wants to simplify so in a scenario like I said once you go back you want to do something so I want you to do something at least at least think on where you can uh, use this in your existing tooling so let's say you have code so cosine is a part of six store so you have code and you will be using cosine to sign your artifacts say like we should whatever we are producing internally we should be signing those artifacts and then Put that in your CI systems, like put that in your uh, GitHub Actions or Jenkins, whatever is it is there, and you can continuously sign that. Actually, when you create the public-private key pair, you can use the passphrase, so you can you are okay to publish the private key because that will be protected by a passphrase. So they can actually uh, properly verify, and each each SHA commit can be signed individually by a public-private key, and you can generate on the fly, generate on each commit. So that's, that's one scenario. Let's look at some, uh, another complex scenario, which is another tool, which is called SIFT, which is a CLI tool for generating the S-bombs. So basically, uh, the SWIFT 
tool can generate the S bombs in different formats that we discussed, like Cyclone uh, DX or SPDX, and its own format in JSON, in SPDX format. So it is a great tool for generating the S bombs. So you can generate S bombs, and this is an open source tool. So you should be doing that. And then use six store tooling, the cosine, signing, and verifying, uh, protecting your software. And you can use automatic key management system and the transparency logs as well. So you have uh, S bombs prepared. You attach those S bombs. And then what you do is you use some of the vulnerability scanning tools for your attestations or the S bombs that you have attached to your software. Because you need to do something with the attached, uh, you know, soft uh, attached S bombs. So you need to continuously monitor and find if there are any vulnerabilities that is there in this S bomb, so that you know exactly when a new vulnerability comes. This is where I have to patch. This is what I have to fix, or this is what I have to at least know about that it is it matters or it doesn't matter in our particular use case or scenario. So let's see a demo quickly. So demo is quick, so I will definitely do that. So what we'll do is first we'll generate the, sorry, which screen is this? So we'll be using SIF to attest a particular image. Let's do that. So what it is doing is it is attesting using my cosine public key and i have given an image over there and what format i want is the spdx json format and i have i want that to be exported like uh, written so the arrow means that will write to a file called uh, global dev slam dot agt uh, dot json so it will be using that particular json file to write the s bomb um, stuff for this particular image like it is generating right now also what you can do is uh, for generating the key pair, uh, it's very simple command. You can do cosine generate key pair. I'm not going to do that because it's already there. But you can give generate and give a username and password. Once it's done, we'll use cosine to attach that as attestation. So let's go back. It should not take that much time. So meanwhile, this is happening. We can continue to the last slide as well. So what do you do next is you question your software, whether your software, uh, what, are, what is running in your software, what are libraries you're using, what are dependencies you're using, are you using any um, malicious vulnerability dependent library, or have you not updated or patched some of the versions of, uh, of the libraries that you're using? Ask your vendors about S-bombs. Now they can tell you, okay, here's the S-bomb. They can tell you, maybe we are working on it, or they can tell you oh, we don't have it. So you can get different answers, then you can at least say we need the S bomb so that we can verify that it is genuine, you are following the best practices and all these things. Uh, sign all artifacts, software, patch your software regularly. Uh, look into the new and the latest technology with respect to the cloud native ecosystem. Like uh, you have <coughs> Wolfi, Talos, which are the modern operating system for container uh, for con specifically for Kubernetes and containers. So let's go back. It is still happening, but anyways, the, la the, the next command is uh, the attaching. So what this command does is attach the attestation that was just that will be produced by the above command to the image which is there. I was hoping that it will, but it is taking a little bit more time due to the internet connectivity happens in a live demo. And you can connect with me on all the platforms. Uh, so I'm very active. Again, I told you over uh, you know, Twitter, YouTube. And you can connect on the Cube Simplifier community as well. And you can join me on my next talk, which is on 13th, uh, on application deployment to Kubernetes made easy using Acorn. So yeah, very happy to be uh, at the GITX conference and hope you took something away with this particular session. And yeah, we have actually created the packages, which is good. And now we have attached that uh, attestation. And the last command that will run, which will not take, which will take less than 30 seconds, I would hope so, is to verify. So that's what I was saying. You can use the public key to verify that the payload which is attached is correct payload. 
So yeah, that's pretty much it that I had for this particular session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can find me. Not very hard to find in this fancy jacket. Um, thank you so much.